Hey everyone and welcome to a new video series. In the following video I will tell you everything you need to know about the new Xamapix beta firmware that just came out. And next to what's included in the patch notes in the Xim forum I will also mention some further infos that should help you to better judge if it's worth it for you to upgrade to that firmware or not. The way you find that firmware is by just heading into the XIMP forums, scroll a little bit down until you can see the XIMP epics area and under the download section you can find the beta button. Just click it and you can see all the available XIMP beta firmware versions. And at the very top you can always find the newly released one that I'll cover in more detail now. But before I go over the content of this update, if you have never updated your Xim Apex and it still runs on the firmware that it shipped with originally, then your firmware is pretty much one year older than the following beta firmware. As you can guess, since then a lot of new features have been added, which in my opinion make a really huge difference. I can only recommend you to use the beta firmware over the one that your Xim came with. Also in the middle you can find the history of features that have been added since that firmware. You can see there is steady aim, boost, simulate analog behavior, there's quite a lot of stuff that you're missing out on if you use the original XIM firmware. You can also find tutorial videos for pretty much all of these features on my channel, so I will not go over those now, just watch them if you would like to know what they actually do. If you scroll down a little bit more you can find the explanation of how to update your XIM Apex and also your XIM Manager to get on that firmware. The XIM Manager links can be found right below. Also if you don't fully understand those explanation steps then you can also watch my XIM Apex basic guide where I explain and showcase the whole update process in more detail. In that video I'll also show you how you can backup your configs for example. So if you struggle with the whole update process, then I'd recommend you to watch that video instead. But now, let's get to the actual changes of this firmware compared to the previous beta firmware. So first we have an additional fix for mice and keyboards that tend to have problems with the XIM or may not work right out of the box. Those of you who use a Corsair keyboard for example will know what I'm talking about. The XIM will not recognize those keyboards unless you flip a switch at the back of them or you press a certain button combination to turn the keyboard into a BIOS mode. Only that way the XIM will recognize it. Now with that firmware you should no longer be required to do that. Actually that should also allow you to use custom backlight colors now because you no longer need to have the default wild color that the BIOS mode sort of forces you to use. If one of you has a Corsair keyboard, maybe let me know about that one. Now the second change is about a mouse data problem that occurred in previous firmware versions where your reticle would jump in very very rare occasions. And by that I mean really really rare occasions and it only happened in like one or two specific games. One thing that I should maybe mention here is that this fix didn't introduce any changes to how your XIM translates your mouse movements, so everything will feel just as good as before. This fix will not change your mouse sensitivity or anything in that regard. The last change is probably the biggest one and is strangely not listed in the text. I should maybe change that, but on the other hand Obsif mentions it just a few posts further down below in that topic, so I guess that should also work. Anyway, the change is about how the simulate analog behavior is implemented into your XIM configs. As you probably already know, whenever you create a new XIM config and of course you are running on a beta firmware, I mean without that you won't have that SAB feature, then your config will use a default simulate analog behavior value of 0. Now 0 doesn't mean that it's completely turned off, it's actually still running in the background at a very very low degree. And there's a good reason for that, which is something that I'll address at the very end of the video. Now with the following firmware the effect of this feature, when it's set to 0, has been reduced by a little bit. And the reason for that is that in a few games such as PUBG you could run into a movement problem when you use an SAB value of 0. Basically you couldn't move your character at the very beginning of each game for a pretty short duration of time. It wasn't really long but long enough to be annoying. 
So that's gone now thanks to this change. The following firmware will fix that for you. Another thing that I should maybe mention is that this change only applies to the SAB value of 0. So any other simulate analog behavior value hasn't been touched at all. That means if you are using an SAB value in one of your configs, let's say SAB 50 or 70 or whatever value you use, then that value will have the very same effect and strength as it has right now with your previous beta firmware that you have installed on your sim right now. Now before I end the video, I quickly want to address for why having a very small but permanent SAB effect in all your XIM configs is actually quite a good thing. First, the SAB effect is so low that it's impossible to tell the difference between a completely turned off SAB effect and the base SAB effect that your XIM runs on when it's set to zero. So your character movements will be just as precise with SAB0 than when shutting the feature off completely. However, and here comes the big benefit of it, simulate analog behavior tremendously helps with aim assist problems. And it does that even at a very very low value. Of course more SAB will help even more, but that way you can ensure that players who play with a beta firmware but never heard of SAB and therefore use a value of 0 have a much better aim assist experience with their mouse when it comes to aim assist. I have linked my simulate analog behavior tutorial in the video description in case you're curious now about what else this feature maybe has to offer. Also let me know if you would like me to keep you updated on future firmware releases by doing more of these videos whenever a new beta firmware comes out. But that's about it for this video guys, thanks for watching and I will maybe see you in the next one.